NASA has proposed using a large magnetic bubble at the Martian L5 to shield from the cosmic rays of the sun. And while this will be stable, it will take a large inflatable structure to achieve it. They find in research that this shield would enable the atmosphere to not be hit by the cosmic rays and the solar wind and blown away. And so it will enable Mars to have an atmosphere and it will protect from those solar rays. One problem is that it won't protect from the cosmic rays because they're coming at different angles and just the one sort of tube of the magnetic paws of the magnetic bubble. And while Mars would have radioactive soil from the cosmic rays, this I think is not the complete picture. Another rather obscure problem about colonizing Mars is that its day is 40 minutes longer than Earth's day, so people's circadian rhythms don't adjust. When they were staying at the same time as on Mars for the rovers, they found that they were getting totally exhausted by the end because of those 40 extra minutes a day. As I said on my other video, I think the real reason that there may not be as many advanced civilizations in every galaxy lighting up every galaxy as they think they might be if we were not that unique Maybe because, as they believe now, the moon has been captured, and the evidence from the moon rocks have found. And so the moon is basically stirring up the magnetic field of the Earth that's sloshing around, and that generates the shield that shields us from both cosmic rays and from the sun's rays. They're really hot and radioactive, we would say. So the evidence that the Martian soil is actually considerably radioactive would also be true of all the Earth-like planets, mostly. Because it's just a coincidence the moon was captured because our moon is much larger for its size than most other planets. And only with large enough gravity does the core become liquid enough to then generate the strong enough magnetic field to show from the cosmic rays. And if the capture of the moon was really like an accident, mostly, because none of the other planets have large moons in the solar system, this would tell us that almost all the Earth-like planets also, in different star systems, don't have enough magnetic field to show from the star's cosmic radiation. There are other things that are large moon causes, that is like it keeps the Earth from coming tidally locked by the tides as the one side would face the sun by the ice of the ice caps making it so that it tilts over to one side. As Venus always keeps the same face towards us, an impactor, smacter, so Venusian smoosion as they say. And it's believed something huge has hit Venus and smacked its side so it's always facing us. And there are other reasons I think that the large moon makes it so life is only possible on the Earth and not as often on other Earth-like worlds. And that is because the moon causes most of the volcanic eruptions, and this causes the oceans perhaps to be formed. Not the large asteroids they think that may fit the Earth. Each one has enough water, one-fifth of the water to fill the oceans. Three-fourths of the volcanic ooze from volcanoes is actually steam. Two-thirds of the earthquakes and volcanoes are within 10 days of the start of the month. And even if these large five asteroids hit the Earth, it's going to have a huge amount of water just in the rocks below the surface. And for this reason, I think the asteroids really weren't the source of the ocean. So all these are good reasons to believe that Mars might do well with a larger moon, much larger moon than it's got for colonizing Mars. One way I initially thought we might find a really cheap way of colonizing Mars would be to take a small laser or other like ablation method to move a small asteroid which then whizzes past a larger asteroid we want to move to Mars or whatever, and that one would whiz past a large one perhaps, and that crashes into the side of Mars, and if we pick the right asteroid with the right profile, we can get water, air, and the right kind of minerals for life. As I thought about this maybe like eight years ago on my blog, I was saying that we would have to crash in repeatedly because it's going to lose its atmosphere as the atmosphere fizzles away, and so we have to repeatedly crash the asteroids into Mars, like, say, once every 100 years. But the problem I noticed was that people are already on Mars, so you have to move them off the other side of Mars to crash that asteroid in. And you really don't get as much minerals on the other side of Mars, and that's where you want it the most, or a lot of them. So a cheap way to move a moon around Mars to give it the magnetic field might be to take one of the Galilean satellites of Jupiter and send a magnetic bubble to one side, spear it into one side of that moon, and that magnetic bubble makes the magnetic field of Jupiter power its linear path outward at high speed. It's fast enough to reach Mars at higher speeds, so we don't have to wait a long time. And if we use this cheap method to set the satellite in orbit around Mars, now we have a more reliable magnetic shield, like the magnetic bubble that NASA is proposing that we use. One problem with the magnetic bubble is about reliability of this type, because 
Terrace could easily knock it down, and all the people on Mars will be getting cancer or other problems with the radiation if there's a lot of people living on Mars. Two other problems, as I say, are the radioactive soil and the poisonous soil of Mars, and also that the cosmic rays come coming from all angles and not just from the sun. But if this large moon is in orbit around Mars and has a magnetic bubble on it, then we can use that to magnetize Mars much more reliably and build up its magnetic field by its own natural magnetic field itself. This may be how the Earth gets its magnetic field from our moon because the tides may stir enough to cause this. Essentially, the moon is inducing the magnetic field of the Earth, and if we had a large moon with a magnetic bubble on it moving around Mars, this might make it so it would induce a large enough magnetic field that it would shield from the cosmic rays and the sun's rays both in a more reliable way. This method of using a large satellite to orbit around Mars by simply changing its orbit with a cheap, cheap magnetic bubble might be hugely cheaper than other methods of terraforming Mars. If we then crash several asteroids into the side of Mars, we're going to get an atmosphere, we're going to get oceans, and we're going to get minerals of value. As I say, one problem with colonizing Mars is about the radioactive soil and about the 40-minute extra Martian day that was going to disrupt everybody's circadian rhythms. To solve this, I think we might take large enough asteroids to crash into the side of Mars at an angle and to speed up its Martian day. But because it only takes 10 feet of like concrete to stop radiation, deeper in the radioactivity may not much cause much harm to the minerals and the water inside the asteroid. And so when we crash this asteroid inside of Mars, we're dispersing all that toxic radioactive soil. We're diluting it quite to a considerable degree. And this will make it much more easy to tolerate for those future colonizers. And we won't call them Martians. I believe other problems with colonizing Mars may have also relatively simple solutions. The low surface gravity can be solved by large inflatable dwellings that spin with centrifugal force like a tube. And this will make it so they would have enough gravity most of the time. The problem of the rocky terrain, where you don't know if the lander is going to crash or not, was it lands on a boulder. I think it would be solved making the bottom part of your lander inflatable with a large uh, airbag. Another problem is about supersonic retro propulsion. This is when you're air braking in the Martian air and they don't know if it's about to know how stable it will be. And as I say, I think we could use magnetic bubbles for this or inflatable shields. The magnetic bubbles are my favorite because you can make it change so fast it wouldn't cause a lot of strain on your machine. And the asteroid method would solve the soil toxicity problem. We'd have large oceans enough. And this would also solve the behavioral problem of, you know, when they give them the simulation of going to Mars in a tube, and after nine months of this sort of isolation with each other, they get on each other's nerves and they start to fight. But with larger room, this could be solved by having enough room just by terraforming Mars. The largest frontier we've ever traversed since people came to the New World from the old, and so this will be a huge area that people could go out into and feel good about the weather. And so this problem of not enough room to move around will be solved by that. And also, one of the main things is we want to choose the right molecular and chemical profile for the asteroid that we crash into Mars. Mars already has a lot of iron, so a moon that was magnetized moving around Mars at high enough speed could presumably create a strong magnetic field right away. We also want to choose the right kind of moon that would have magnetic field itself. So we want to pick a satellite that has a strong magnetic field enough to achieve our goals. There are some who said we could use a magnetic band, an iron band around Mars, but this would be tougher to construct. And I thought of the idea of using several asteroids originally that would be have magnetic fields and form a sort of shield all the way around. But I think that one moon will be simpler and cheaper to make and also we will be using up the asteroids that we use to crash them into Mars, using them for valuable minerals and water and other resources.